One, two, three, three, four. Hey guys, it's me, Mr. Adams here, and we're building a special project here. Um, we're building a horizontal uh, beehive, and uh, we want to thank Dr. Uh, Leo Sharashkin from Horizontal Hive. Uh, he has provided the prints for this, and my students are building this beehive. We built a few of these beehives in my class. The particular hive that we're building is an insulated laying hive. So um, we just got done, but well, we're not totally done with the frames. We have to wire them and, and install our uh, our uh, uh, bed on there. But we have this beehive pretty much underway. This is an insulated laying hive. The guys are painting their designs on it. This is the stand here for the for the beehive. So on his site, it has step by step by step instructions on how to build this beehive. And I wanted to uh, do a video series to complement that. So here in class, you guys know exactly what to do. So this is the beehive as it's almost finished here. We have a lid down at the metal shop getting a roof put on it. This is the stand. This beehive sits on this stand. We still have to drill the holes in here and add some little spinning wheels there for the bees. There's lots to know about this stuff, but um, it's pretty much underway and almost finished. I have several of these at my house. They work great. Um, this is what the base looks like. The first thing that you're gonna build when you're building your beehive here is you're gonna build an insulated base, all right? And you can see we built our insulated base out of half inch plywood and three quarter inch strips that we made out of just scrap two by four. So we took two by four lumber that we had left over from project and we ripped it one and a half inches by three quarters thick, um, which would be the same as a one by two. Um, so once you get that made, they look like this, all right? we need. This is part G in the print. Right here we have two G's. I'm gonna show you how to cut the notches in the G in a second here. And this is the H's, the beginnings of the base. If you look here, this particular piece right here is the G. This particular piece right here is the H. And they're assembled with two dado joints that fit in like so. Okay, once they're assembled, they're gonna slide down. Well, we gotta tap them down and they'll be flush like so. So I'm gonna show you how to make these cuts on the table saw um, right now. So again, this is part G, this is part H. Uh, the first thing you're gonna do is you're gonna, we milled our own lumber, but the length of this particular piece is 35 and 9 16 inches long. And this piece here is 17 and 7 16 inches long. The notch is approximately one and seven eighths inch or one and 27 30 seconds, I think he says on his print. Um, but it's essentially one and seven eighths inches in from the end. And then we need to mark it three quarters of an inch over. So I've gone ahead and marked those. I measured in, once I had my piece cut, this particular piece again is 17 and seven sixteenths long. I measured in one and seven eighths. And I'm gonna go notch out a three quarter inch chunk like this on both of these pieces. So we're gonna take it over here to the table so I'm gonna explain how, to, how we do this in this class. There's a few different ways of doing such a thing, but um, how we do it in my class here is we're just going to keep this, the same saw blade that's typically in there. Step one is we're going to adjust the height to the same height as the thickness of the inventory that we're using. All right. We're going to remove, we have a saw stop saw in our shop, so it shuts off if you touch your hand to the blade. So we feel safe and confident in moving our, our guard out of the way for this operation. And we're going to install our miter head on the table saw. All right. So we're going to use this for the cut. We're gonna use both slots on our table saw. We're gonna use this slot for the miter head and we're gonna use this slot for the miter head. So we're gonna use both of the slots. Again, step one is set the depth. And if you get how to do that, there's a knob over here that you loosen up and it raises and lowers the depth on the table saw. So we're gonna set the depth of the table saw at the same height as the stock. After we get that done, install your miter gauge. We're gonna line up our marks with our saw blade. Typically, we would turn the dust collector on. We're gonna skip that step this time so you guys can hear. And we're gonna go ahead, I'm gonna show you how I go about notching this. Some people would use what we refer to as a stacked dado head blade, but just for the ease of your project, we're gonna leave the same blade in that we normally use in this class, and we're going to uh, notch out a, a dado joint in this.
I removed my miner head and slide it into this notch so I can do the other side now. So that's what the notches should look like. We're gonna do that on both G. This is part G. We're gonna mark where we want it, one and seven eighths in, three quarters thick, and we're gonna notch this one out as well. We'll take it over here to our, once we have all our parts made, we're gonna go ahead, bring it over here. We're gonna glue this joint, and we're going to assemble it like so. Okay, this joint will go here. After we notch this one, it will go here. This one will go over here. And eventually it's going to look like our finished piece. After we get the frame built, we're gonna cut our pieces of plywood next. And that'll be the next video on how to cut and assemble our plywood. Inside of here, we have, we have wool insulation that we're using to keep the beehive insulated throughout the year. So um, that's, the, that's the beauty of this particular beehive. It's a lanes hive. It's an insulated hive um, and they seem to work really well. So anyway, thanks guys. That's step one of your insulated lanes hive. Um, thank you.